Good day, my name is Dr. Rapiti and it's been a long time and I've sent a video on a Sunday and in today's video it will be slightly different in that I know on the tip of everybody's tongue on the middle of the mind is the oncoming Marburg virus epidemic which is being expected to be quite a threat to us in this country. This is what the experts tell us so I thought I would research it so you'll forgive me, I'll be moving into, to get my facts right and to be quite sure that I give you the correct information. I'm quoting you here from an article written by a virologist, uh, somebody who works in zoonotics. She is Dr. Wanda Marketer and she is from the University of Pretoria and she has a special interest in the transmission of viruses from animals to humans. And um, uh, in this article, she mentions there was been the first outbreak of the Marburg virus in, in Guinea, West Africa, on the 9th of August, 2021. Ever since then, we haven't heard any widespread infection or uh, uh, cases of the Marburg virus. Just for your information, this Marburg virus is part of a group of the Ebola virus. Some of you must have heard about it. It comes in the same family, and one of the symptoms of the uh, symptoms of this virus, it's an um, it's described as an hemorrhagic fever, and the so symptoms are severe fever, high fever, headaches, and loss of blood. One could bleed through the nostrils, through the mouth, through the vagina. So and one could lead to death. Let's go back to a little bit of the history. The Marburg virus was first um, noticed in laboratory workers back in, in Germany and Yugoslavia, now Serbia, back in 1967. And apparently this had gone through to them um, when it, it is presumed that when a uh, green monkey was imported from Uganda to Europe. That is when they thought um, the virus was spread from monkeys to, from animal to humans. But we didn't hear much of that thereafter. But there was another outbreak uh, in the DRC in, in 1998 to 2000 and in Angola 2004 and 2005. In each of these, respectively, in, in the DRC, there were 128 cases, and in the DRC, there were 227 human fatalities. We are, well, basically, in this outbreak in the DRC and in, in Angola, there was 128 fatalities and 227 fatalities. So, there was about 24% to 88% outbreaks, uh, uh, deaths in, 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 in the case management. But what, it, what I found striking in this article is that it didn't spread thereafter. I mean, 127 compared to the thousand that were infected by the coronavirus is a relatively small figure. Not to dismiss it, but I mean, not to become too alarmist about it at the same time. It can be controlled. It's spread by fluids through person-to-person uh, -person contact on uh, surfaces and so on. Um, so we had our first case again on the 9th of August in uh, 2021, but thereafter we've heard nothing else thereafter. Uh, we didn't know what the treatment is for it. We still don't know. We don't have a vaccine for it, though Gabby says they're going to have a vaccine in 100 days. And my big question would be, why would you want to go out all out for a vaccine that has such a low number of fatalities? Yes, maybe fatal, but would you go and immunize the whole world against it? I'm not so sure. And the other big question that rankles my mind is, why would you use a corona booster for a virus that is different from the booster? In other words, the, the, if it's the predictor that we're going to be hit by a Marburg strain, I, don't, I fail to see how taking a boost of the coronavirus is going to protect anyone. I wonder if this is just not uh, misinformation, disinformation, or another scan tactic to take a vaccine that is unsuitable for it. But be that as it may, we've now identified that it is Egyptian um, bat that is now the reservoir. We've gotten that far. 
to find is the Egyptian bat. And these bats reside in caves and in, in, in old used mines. And so we don't seem to have much of that problem, but nevertheless, that we've identified where the source is. It's the Egyptian rosette fruit bat. That's the name of the bat. And um, so if you had to ask me, I am not so sure that this is going to lead to a widespread pandemic, especially in our cities, because we don't have caves and used mines for these bats to reside in, because they are the reservoir of this virus. So it's a question of waiting and watching and seeing what would really occur in, in December, as is predicted. I don't know where the people predicting this information get it from, what will be their basis and how they can predict there's going to be an epidemic uh, and it's going to be so serious that people are going to die. I think we need to stop the fear mongering. We need to have more facts and, um, and we don't have any treatment. So I'm not so sure taking a virus that is not designed for this particular virus is going to make any difference. So thus far, it's been around from 1967 to sum up, there have been two outbreaks, one in 2000 and one in 1998 in, in, in um, Uganda and the DRC, and they haven't spread out widely. So I'm not entirely sure that we're going to have a similar thing in, in I don't think they're in any way related to the coronavirus. So we're missing the pot if we try to tie it up with the coronavirus. And for those of you who are worried, the coronavirus in my practice has come down to zero. I'm hardly seeing any patients. What I'm seeing is a lot of influenza type A, and they're getting well soon on my usual treatment work for coronaviruses. So there's no need for panic, I personally think. I think Mr. President should go low down on his on his um, lockdowns and and. and making people afraid. This is a time that people have been, we've been made afraid for the last 20 months. And I wish to take umbrage with a gospel group who went around saying that they're doing so badly in the music industry. So they went out thinking, saying that they're going to sing the tunes about going out and vaxxing everybody because by vaxxing everybody, we'll be able to walk out and move and, and they will get the crowds. I think that's been very selfish of them because uh, right now, Germany has got 40,000 cases daily and rising, even though they've got 85% um, double vaccination. So we shouldn't lull ourselves into complacency and just think, well, if you've got the vaccine, that you will not get it. But I think here in South Africa, we've, we've turned the tide. It's now the time of the Northern Hemisphere countries to get their whack off the Delta strain. And you can see that the coronavirus vaccine is not really working in those countries because the highest rates of hospitalization are coming from the double vax. So I hope this in a video, short video, would help you to understand and stop being fearful and be confident that we are going to make a turn in, in our fight against in this pandemic. Thank you very much, Dr. Rapiti.